going to do roll call. Alderperson Barb Feldy, I'm present. Betty Ackley is excused. Dean Decker? Here. Leslie Laster? Here. Amanda Salazar? Here. That's it. I'm going to call the meeting to order. And would everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to go around the table and introduce everybody. I am Bart Feldy. I am the president of the council and the chair of the License Hearing and Public Safety Committee and Alder I, I lost audio, so I'm assuming you're looking at the screen, but I hear nothing. But I'm Leslie Laster, Alderperson District 8. But I can't hear you anymore. You, uh, that whole room went silent in the middle of your sentence. OK, I couldn't hear any of you after Barb introduced herself, which is fine now, but I can hear you now. Did you guys accidentally mute yourself on the panel? I did. I'm not muted. No, they're, I mean, they're not either. So they can't hear me? I think they can hear us. OK. Alderperson Laster, Leslie Laster, District 8. I don't think they can. I'm not muted, so I'm not sure. I'm on, on their computer right now. OK. All right, can you hear us now? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're back to being recorded. You'll be able to splice the recording back together, Micah, so we don't have to start over. It never ended, actually. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, great. There we go. Okay, I'm going to move on to approval of minutes from November 10th. Do I have approval? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carried. Okay, 3.1 presentation regarding Sheboygan Fire Department ambulance billing rates discussion only. Well, thank you, Chair. So, uh, yeah, I, as uh, Mike introduced, uh, he's our battalion chief that oversees our EMS division of the fire department. And he's going to give a presentation 
on the uh, request that we made Monday night to the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting uh, group. And um, so with that, I will turn it over to Mike. Uh, and I don't know if they're ready for you, Mike. Sure. Yeah, seconds there. All right, and then Mike, am I able to control it from over here? Yeah, use Perfect. the arrow keys right, well, on the keyboard. You. All right, thank you, committee members. Um, so my name is Mike Lubert. I'm the battalion chief for the Sheboygan Fire Department, and I oversee the EMS division under the Fire Chief Montalano. Um, so what I'm going to do is go over our ambulance service rate proposal for um, 2022. Um, so we're proposing to increase our ambulance rates for the city of Sheboygan's ambulance um, effective January 1st of 2022. Um, the reason behind this is we haven't had an ambulance rate increase since 2008. So this rate increase is going to cover all of our billing areas, which includes our advanced life support, our basic life support, our specialty care transports, our treatment and no transports, our mileage, and then our lift assist. These are all the things we bill for as far as our ambulance service um, is concerned. I'm just going to give you a quick um, overview of what each of these are so you can understand what I'm talking about. Our basic life support calls are just basic calls. So I might call 911. I fell and broke my ankle. The ambulance shows up. Our paramedics arrive. They do what I would call a basic assessment. Um, they make sure I'm breathing. They take a set of vitals. They split my leg. They don't start an IV or anything. And then they transport me to the hospital. That would be a basic life support call. An advanced life support call would be a more serious call. So I call 911. I say I'm having chest pain. Our paramedics arrive on scene. They would still do what we call a basic life support assessment um, with a basic set of vitals. But being that it's chest pain, they know this is going to require some more advanced treatments. So they're going to do things such as put on a cardiac monitor, start an IV, um, give some medications, and consult with the emergency department physician on the best course of our treatment. Then we have what we call our specialty care transports. These would be our hospital to hospital transports. So for example, St. Nicholas Hospital, Congo, we have a person that's having a heart attack and we need them to go to Aurora Grafton to get a, um, a cardiac cath. Our paramedics, we do special training for this and we have special equipment for these transports such as IV pumps and our paramedics um, will monitor multiple medications running at the, uh, at the same time and then we'll transport these patients down to the specialty care center. So these require more training, more equipment. So these are a higher charge. Then we have what we call our treatment no transports. So these fall under the basic life support category and the advanced life support category. So a basic life support treatment no transport would be somebody falls on the ground, our paramedics arrive on scene, they do an assessment and then the person that called goes, you know what, I'm, I think I'm okay, I'll transport myself to the hospital. We say no problem. Um, if anything changes, please call back, we'll sign it off, and then they will go to the hospital on their own. The advanced life support part of our treatment, no transports, our patients like a diabetic that has a low blood sugar, our paramedics arrive, they're unresponsive, we would start an IV, we would give them some medications, they wake up, um, we make sure that they're okay, and then they say, I'm good, I'm just going to stay home. We say no problem, sign them off, and then tell them to call back if anything else changes. Our mileage is our loaded patient mileage. So this is the amount we charge per mile from on scene to the destination hospital. And then something new we're adding in is our lift assist, which I will touch on at the end with the chief. So that's just kind of overview of what we're billing for. Can I get you to lean back just a little bit? Sorry, thank you. So the reason for the rate increase proposal is that we haven't adjusted our rates since 2008. Um, some of the things that have really changed since then is we've seen an increase in our call volume. We've seen an increase in our supply costs. Um, we have equipment maintenance. Most of our equipment is about 14 years old. So we're getting to the point where we have to start to um, change out some of our equipment and replace it. Um, we've seen our fuel costs increase, but in effect, we've also seen um, our revenue increase as well. Um, I did a comparison of 2009 to 2019, just so you can see. Um, 2009, our revenue after we paid our bills was uh, was $791,000. 2019, it was right about 1.5 million. Our supply costs in 2009 were 49,000. In 19, because of our increased call volume, um, is at 70,000. And I would say for 21, we're right around 76,000. And then our fuel costs are up um, from 7,700. 
to $13,000. Our call volume though from 2009 to 19 has gone from about 2,600 calls a year to we're about um, right around over 4,200 for this year. So our call volume has also gone up, which is why a lot of these costs have gone up as well. 26 to 4,200? Yes. And just an EMS. Just an EMS. Yeah, that, not overall. Thank okay. you, Chief. I can tell you everything he said is true because I made that trip with them already. <laughs> the first thing I did was said, Call 911, but tell them not to come with the sirens on. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen to you. I, I know that too from my ride. Yeah. And they did an excellent job taking care Good, of me. Thank you. I'm very happy to hear that. It was painful. <laughs> you. Yes. Your guys were great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on. Um, this is an overview of how we currently bill right now. So currently, we bill on what we call um, we have a base charge, and then anything we do gets a separate charge. So if you'll notice at the top there, it says base. This is just the ambulance shows up and our paramedics do their assessment. So a basic life support charge or an advanced life support charge is $750. Our paramedics decide they need to start an IV going straight down the ALS side. That would be another $65. Supplies will include things such as our gloves, oxygen masks, any bandaging. That's a $75 charge. EKG monitoring, if we have a chest pain and we need to put the cardiac monitor on, is a $60 charge. Our 12 lead charge, which is what we do to confirm if somebody's having a heart attack or not, that would be $85. If we administer O2, that would be $65. And then our medication base fee is $30. That comes out to a total of $1,130. This will change very depending on what we do or don't do, depending on what the call is. Um, and then you'll see for basic life support, there's just a $575 charge, a $65 for supplies, and then maybe a $65 for O2 which comes out to 705. And then just kind of going over, we have a treatment and no transport fee right now of $750, which is we arrive on scene, we provide treatments on the ALS side, we sign off and then we leave the patient and go back. So they would just get that base charge if we don't how transport does, them. How does that compare to other um, cities that have EMS? Sure, I'm actually gonna get that to my next slide. So that's a very good question. Jumping ahead here. <laughs> On the treatment, no transport. What, what, are, what do you do in the case? Okay, I saw somebody fall down and I called the ambulance, but they you get there and they say, I don't want no ambulance. Yep, no, good question. <laughs> so that is a good question. And you'll kind of see this a little bit, but I'll touch on it for you. Okay. So we actually have, what we decided for our treatment, no transports, when the chief and I discussed is that we only charge for treatment, no transports if we do something on the advanced life support side. So if we were to start an IV and deliver a medication, then you would get a charge. For a call where, like, let's say I fell on the ground and I got hurt and our ambulance showed up, they did a little bit of bandaging and I was fine, we would sign off a release and they don't get a bill. Okay. Or for the case, like you said, maybe some third party sees, mm -hmm. calls 911 and we get there and there's no problem, no harm, no follow, we sign them off. If you need anything else, call us back and then we leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all good questions. Thank you very much. Um, so, just kind of a quick overview of what I went through a little bit just so you can understand how our billing currently goes. Ambulance arrives on scene, they charge $750 for our advanced life support assessment. Our paramedics decide they need to start an IV, that's an $85 charge. Um, then we have a supply charge, so that just covers our gloves and oxygen mask and bandages. That would be 75. They perform a 12 lead EKG and a cardiac monitor hookup, that would be 60 plus 85. They give oxygen, that's $65. And then medications are 30, and you can't see this because it's covering, um, our mileage fee would be $16 per mile. So that's how we currently bill on kind of like an a la carte. As we perform, a, perform skills, you get charged for it. If we don't, then you don't. So kind of looking at comparables, when we talked to our billing company and we kind of researched what the industry practices as of 2020, talking to other departments, Departments don't really charge the a la carte rate where we have a base fee and then charge for everything. We just bund they just bundle everything together. So what we kind of did is we looked at the comparable departments and we also used Orange Cross as well, just because they're in the county and we wanted to be comparable to them as well. Um, they decided it was just easier to bundle all the charges into one charge and then it's one fee if we perform an ALS call or a basic life support call or a treatment or transport call. And some of the reason for the industry standard in that was that there was less billing 
um, that was missed when the billing company looked through it. As far as Medicare and Medicaid were concerned, they didn't really care how we charged for it. We just got paid the rates anyways. So it was just more simple and standard practice for everybody just to do one base charge for everything. So if you'll see, we went through all these different departments here, kind of what they charge, and then we took the average. So for an advanced life support charge, the average came out to be $1,365. A basic life support charge is $1,243. Um, a treatment and no transport was right around $335, and the average mileage was $19.93. Um, $19 so those are our comparables, Alder Feldy, that you had asked? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping. Okay. Yep. And you'll see they're kind of pretty close together. There's a couple of high ones, Waukesha's um, ALS is 2000, and the cheapest one on there is uh, 1050, which is in Wisconsin Rapids. Thank you. Uh, yeah, can you, can you make sure Alder Lasters can still hear? Alder Lasters, are you still able to hear? Okay. I'm good, thank you. So moving on, this would be the Sheboygan Fire Department rate proposal. Um, the top line is our previous rates. Um, the second line down is the average comparables of all the departments we looked at. And the third line down is our proposed new rates. So you'll see for our ALS call, um, previously we charged right around $1,130 for a typical call. The average industry or the average of our comparable departments was $1,365. Um, and we're proposing the rate of $1,178 for our, our bundle cost as of January 1st, 2022. Um, the last line is non-residents get a $100 extra charge. So our base rate for a non-resident would be $1,278 for an advanced life support call. Um, our ALS2 calls, which those are what we call, those are really critical calls where we're performing a lot of skills and doing a lot of extra stuff. That one is $1,291 for our new charge. Um, that's underneath the $1,474 of the comparables. Our basic life support, the old charge was $705. Our comparables were $1,243. And our proposal was for $800. Our specialty care was $1,230. Um, the comparables were $1,762. And our proposal is $1,400. Our treatment and no transports were $750. The comparables were $335 and that proposed is 800. And then our old mileage was 16, the comparables were 1993, and our proposal is $19 per mile. Um, one thing that I'll just touch on real quick, because this came up at the last committee meeting, was why is the average comparable for the treatment no transport so low compared to what we charge? And the reason is a lot of departments charge for some of these basic life support calls. So for example, when you ask me like, what if I just fall down and I only hurt myself a little bit? We still have to respond. There's departments that do charge for that. However, we felt that when the chief and I had a discussion that that really wasn't right for us to do that. We weren't really using a lot of um, resources and supplies. So we were just gonna charge for the advanced life support calls where we're starting an IV and delivering a medication um, and doing a lot of skills and supplies. So that would be why our TNT is a little bit higher than the 335. And Alder Decker, when you asked what if a good Samaritan calls, and so for example, if you were in a car accident, let's say you had four passengers and they called 911, ambulance responds, and you, you the seatbelt, you know, you just, oh, it was tight because of the seatbelt. I, I have some little tightness on my chest. Well, we have to evaluate you now. And we can't leave you until you sign a release. And now all of a sudden, the other three passengers say a similar thing. Well, we just created four patients that didn't need to be. So now we would charge you $300 per patient. And, that, and we didn't feel that was right. You know, you didn't even call an ambulance. You, you know, you're fine. I just, yeah, my arm's sore. I'm, I'm fine. Well, we can't abandon you. We have to have. So this is a way of us saying, hey, listen, when we do a performance like a ALS, a diabetic, we give medications. Yes, let's charge them, even if they sign a release. The others... We don't want Good Samaritans to stop calling 911, and we don't want to, in essence, punish the patients who didn't call 911 and also get a charge. So I hope that makes sense. Any other questions on this slide? Otherwise, I was going to continue on. Okay, thank you. Um, so the last thing here, this is new for us. Um, we're proposing to add a lift assist fee. Um, so I'll just get the lift assist schedule up here.
so one of the services that we provide is when a citizen either at home or at one of the nursing homes they fall out of bed and they can't get back up into bed themselves or the nursing home staff is unable to lift this patient up they'll call 911 we will go there and we'll assist them up and back into bed or we'll help the nursing home staff assist the patient up and back into their bed and then we don't charge them or leave current or charge them at this currently right now um, we just assist them and then we go back as you can see is our list of lift assists have increased in 2018 there was 134 they almost doubled in 2021 here we're at 256. Um, so what we were proposing is that the first lift assist fee the, the first three lift assists would be free this would be on a rolling calendar basis and then lift assist four to six would be fifty dollars per incident seven to nine would be a hundred and anything after 10 would be 150 per assist based on a rolling calendar year and one of the reasons we kind of came up with this was i would say 95 percent of the lift assists we go to um we help somebody up we help them back into their bed maybe once or twice throughout the year and then we're done and some of the things that our crews do while they're on scene if we do have somebody that falls and just help them up is we go ahead and try to like offer them assistance through the agent and disability resource center or health and human services maybe they need somebody to come into their house and reevaluate their um, living conditions and say you know what are some things we can do to help you but we do have every once in a while incidents where we're going to like where we're going to like a nursing home for example six or seven times where they already have staff there and equipment to help lift these patients up and that's taken our equipment and our frontline personnel out of service that maybe should be running could be running other calls in that area closer at the time um, we also do have a few people, um, a few, a few residents or repeat customers that might call up to 18 times a year. So this was kind of just to maybe try to curve some of that as well. And did you, I'll let you kind of talk if you have anything. No, else. no, I mean it's pretty. You, you did a great job. It's not a rolling calendar year, so the important thing to note is that. So if I called once uh, on January 1st and I don't have another uh, request until. Uh, you know, December 10th, that's still part of that rolling calendar year. Mm -hmm. So even if my third one is December 11th, that's still the first three are free until my next one at January 1st, that one drops off of the following year. And, and that's how it keeps adding. So everybody is different. The nursing homes, what we our intent is, as Mike alluded to, is to kind of, because uh, they have staff on duty, um to kind of curb the abuse of that uh so we are going to build the inch the uh nursing homes as a unit not as an individual so even if all of us in this room were, were patients or you know occupants of uh, residents of that nursing home and we all called for assistance every one of us would get a, a single lift assist well in this case we're all at the same nursing home so that nursing home is going to get eight you know charges <laughs> well, so, the first three would be free, so yeah. only five. First three, correct. first three are free, correct. Good call. So, is there a way that, that, that like a nursing home would be charged? Can we, or, or are we able to differentiate that? Because I mean, I, I think a nursing home is a business. They're, they're not, you know, you know, why are we almost, almost coming to subsidizing that business by them not having the staff? Good question. Uh, so, actually, when you look at our numbers, the nursing homes are. It's you would think that. Out of that 256 from last year, 200 of them are in nursing homes, and that's not the case. Oh. Uh, they're actually our uh, repeat customers, uh, live in residences. And uh, we have one, uh, one particular individual that's called us 18 times this year alone. So oh. it, it, it's just, it adds up. So we're Imagine trying to. Nice. <laughs> well, it, we are, we're, we, we want to make sure everybody's good and we don't yeah. mind and we want to make sure they're safe. Uh, and not hurt. Yeah. Did, but, maybe you need to give them some some companion, you know, tell them this, <laughs> call this place for some for somebody. We always know. try to direct them to finance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, excellent question. So I hope you guys understand the, the reason behind the lift assist. We're it's yeah. not a money maker. We're not trying to <clears throat> punish anyone, but it's we're just trying to curb the the amount of re, uh, repeat customers that we have because it does take a, a lot for us to send a, a rig out there and then now if you had an injury somebody hurts their back 
that adds a, a big, big workman's comp claim to the city. So we're trying to avoid things like that. I'm amazed you have that. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. But, so for like a, uh, so right now we're talking about a company like a nursing home, but let's say for instance, like a, say a gym, right? And they, they have, a, it's a sort of a third place that people go to that are much older or have an opportunity of falling and need assistance to get up. I'm assuming you're not going to like charge sort of say no. something like a, a gym nope. if they've had six people, right? You're you're Correct. specifically looking at just the a, a for-profit business that's having residents that are calling. That. Yeah, we would even if it was a uh, let's let's take a CUNY for example. Even if they called us four times in one year, we're not. It's the individual. That's that's a rare. I mean, it actually is a rare thing. You don't yeah. get that YMCA. Somebody could fall and. And, and trip and they don't need anybody, but somebody calls 911 again, that's that release thing. So the lift assists really are only there at, at those nursing homes or our residents. Um, so. okay. And we actually, these get triaged actually through our emergency medical dispatch. So when they go, when you call 911, they, I don't know if you've called 911, you call 911, um, they go through a set of questions, right? So they'll ask you all these questions. And lift assist actually fall under a certain card cat. I call it a card category. So once they get to enough a set of questions, they'll they'll be like, this question meets this card, and that's a lift assist card. So these are these are actually picked out before our guys even leave the, the station. Okay. They know they're going for these. Okay. So that fall actually at YMCA would never come in as this yeah. even. Okay. Okay. I, I would imagine on a, in a homeless lift assist. That, that also requires sometimes uh, you almost breaking into the home because if someone falls in their home and they need to be lifted, you have to get in there somehow. It's so, so that I'm guessing that there's something, you know. Sure, happens. sure. Yeah, that does happen. Sometimes, you know, we'll get called and if they don't have access from the outside, then our crews have to find out how to get in there. Some people have keys they might notify us and dismantle. Okay. And sometimes the doors open. Uh -huh. Sometimes we just get in. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me what a lift assist um, What's involved in that? Sure, it's it's just basically if if you fell out of your bed in the middle of the night and, and your husband couldn't lift you up, let's say, just making it up, you they would call the fire department. We could come out and we'd send a, a, a crew, whether it's an engine or an ambulance, whoever's closer, and they would assist you and and ask you, are you going into bed or where were you going? Oh, I was going to go sit on my couch. I I just couldn't make it. We might carry you to the couch. You know, we want to make sure you're not hurt first. Do you have gate belts or what do you use? We have a variety of equipment. We have gate belts. Um, we have big lifters that we use to lift people up, you know, and then depending on if we know, need more people, they might call another truck to come and help them as well, you know, just to make sure it's safe for the patient and our people as well. And you. It could be an individual just fell and she's by herself or he's by her, yeah. lives by himself and he just can't get up, and you know. Have you got you guys know about the little necklaces, right? People sure. get this yeah. alert. sometimes that's what it is. I fell, I can't get up, and you know, we go assess. So great. All right. Thank you. Any yep. other questions? Other than that, that's uh, no, I'm not clicking forward here. I think that was it. The end of it, I only had one slide and it was really just a recap, oh, yeah, recap. Yeah, which is right. fine. So just that we're requesting our increase for the rates for the year beginning January 1st, 2022. Um, and it, it was approved at the Finance Committee, so effective January. And, and how do you plan to notify those? The lift assist? Yes, okay, your, so your uh, sort of... The repeat customers? Your uh, so, our customers. Uh, yeah, so what we'll do is... Um, I'll track it uh, on a spreadsheet, and then um, we'll no. we send a letter out. Oh, okay. So you're gonna see who's where, who's at, and then send a letter to them. Yep. Got it. Everybody that gets one will get a letter. So that's it's really close to January first. Yes. Yeah. Great changes happen fast. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's it's been a long time coming. It was just. No, I'm, I'm saying it just gives the those people like you, you're saying like 15 days, and we're gonna up the price, right? Or now we're oh charging. yeah as far as the rate increases no that the i'm sorry my next agenda item but um our billing company will take care of the notification for the rate increases that's part of our contract okay sorry i misunderstood you okay one, one question yeah. i have um, 
I know like with other medical, you know, doctors, hospitals, things like that, there's there's this, this fee and then there's the insurance fee. Do, do we do anything with that at all? Is there, I mean, I know with Medicaid you do, correct? But now. So are, are you talking about the lift assist or the regular ambulance? Regular, the regular ambulance. So again, our medical, our uh, billing company, uh, which I will speak about in a, in a short uh, moment here. Next okay. One, yeah. they're, they're the ones that would handle that. They bill each patient, uh, goes through their insurance, whatever's left over would go to the patient directly. Yeah. So they handled all that. We were we are going to handle the lift assist fee internally okay. at the city. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but like now Medicaid is that it's all know, part of the um, billing with the they, 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 what they pay is that's it, and then that's all correct. you get. You don't get you can't go after you can't ask a person. No, for private insurance, you know their insurance will pay, and then we'll balance the our billing company will balance bill, kind of the same way with Medicare, but Medicaid is not Medicaid is they pay and then that's it. And we, this was discussion only, so we don't need to make any motions or anything. This it's already been put forward to council um, from finance. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you. Good presentation. Yes. Yeah. I learned a lot today. It's one, I'm gonna... <laughs> All right, moving on. Resolution number, well, I can read it off, off of here too. Resolution number 110 um, dash 2122. 12621 resolution authorizing the fire chief to execute an agreement with Andre Medical Billing LTD for ambulance billing service on behalf of the city of Sheboygan Fire Department. Yes, thank you, Chair. So, again, um, we currently have uh, a vendor as our billing company, our third party ambulance billing company. And, and as Alder Decker had asked, they they take care of it all they build the patient they build the insurance companies medicare you know all of the so we are asking to switch we're looking for uh 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 permission to switch vendors to andre's medical billing services uh, effective january 1st um they are uh, a well-known company that uh i've worked with uh, many times in, in my previous uh departments um, several departments here in wisconsin use them there they have an office out of brown deer um, we've been very very happy with the training uh, and meetings that we've had with them we're looking forward to it uh, another aspect that they will bring that we haven't had the ability in the past to do is to allow us to seek collections for those individuals that have not paid uh, we've lost uh, a lot of revenue uh, because we haven't on that route so they will help enforce that as well so I, I would be glad to answer any questions if, if you have um, and it, I, and the one thing that you guys should know is that the fee or the payment you know for services for a and b is all based on call volume so the more as mike alluded to we had about 4200 ems runs if we have 2000 next year and that's it well, then our fee is going to be a lot less. If we have 10,000 EMS runs, obviously it'll be substantially more. So, so you're asking to execute an agreement with the billing company? Yep. It's uh, to take Andres as the billing company, a contract with Andres, to contract with Andres to become our billing service. And so we're canceling with someone else? Correct. Okay. Correct. Our current vendor that we have now. Correct. Um, we have not been happy with their customer service. They all hate. We get several phone calls each day, mm -hmm. um, just complaining that they're unable to get hold of customer service as a patient. Mm -hmm. So they'll reach out to us. It was just a nightmare. Uh, so we we so uh, customer service internally and externally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. Are you having issues also with um, that they aren't collecting from some of them? That there's, you know, you've lost some some money because they didn't pursue it enough, or they didn't send it. Yeah. So, so there was there was a discrepancy with the collections. Yes, it was missed. So, if uh, the individual was not making payments, um, and after the 120 days, you know, the 30, 60, 90. Um, yeah, we were losing losing that collection ability. And I know it's not a large revenue source, but it's still, 
So we weren't going after Kalesh's all with this company. Uh, it, it was a little miscommunication between city and, and the company, but uh, moving on, this Andres will be taking care of that. Okay. Uh, through a, they they do contract with a third party, which you know, mm -hmm. uh, Caitlin and I have been taught. Yeah, so it will be handled on as soon as uh, hopefully things are in order in January. Perfect. Thank you. Do you do we need a motion? I would make like a motion to uh, approve this. A second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. Chair votes yes. Okay, resolution moving on 3.3. Resolution number 117 2122. Uh, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the documents necessary to purchase an ambulance from American Response Vehicles Inc. for the Sheboygan Fire Department and to make other purchases necessary to equip the new ambulance. Yeah, so thank you again, Chair. So um, as I explained uh, several, several months ago in our, uh, we discussed in our capital improvements plan and all this, which was one of our uh, items on the agenda there was to replace our ambulance. Uh, so it is replacing uh, a six, roughly a 16 year old ambulance. So, um, AV is or ARV, um, as they're known now, is a very reputable company. That uh, it's a new company for us, but uh, here here in Sheboygan. But again, I'm familiar with them. Used them. Uh, the money that we're asking for and the extra items uh, would be to make sure that uh, it is increasing from a four fleet ambulance fleet to five ambulance fleet. So it's making sure that we have the proper equipment on there. To be our reserve ambulance and put it in frontline service when needed so we are actually going from uh four four vehicles to five um so yeah it's uh everything that's uh, associated with the cost is on there yes ma'am so what you're saying is you're going to keep the the 15 year old ambulance um but move it to the back only as needed correct unfortunately uh alderfeldy we we have to do that normally you would want to get rid of it trade it in and, and sell it but uh because we need a spare um we have to keep this so we're going to keep the best out of the all four that we have now the best uh maintained and the one that's that, that's best and move that to reserve and replace our oldest unit with this one uh, because it's brand new so uh, it will be put in frontline service. It's not going to be a reserve name. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I'm in favor. And I'm guessing that this is going to be a, a what kind of time frame? I mean, with, 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 I know with vehicles right now, uh, things are kind of dicey. Yeah, Mike started this process literally, uh, I mean, probably about five, six months ago. And it, we're talking at least eight months into next year before, before you get it. Yeah. Well, even, yeah, we're, we're hoping that we will yes. get it, but yes, there's a huge supply shortage. We're running into the same issue with our engine that we ordered and everybody approved back in February of this year. I don't know if you guys recall me talking, yeah. about it, but it hasn't even gone to the assembly line yet. It hasn't even been, and that was back in February. It was supposed to go in June. So everything is is uh, in, in high demand. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we will get it in the fall of next year because the ambulances are getting older and older, and they're costing more to maintain as well. So. Okay. All right. I will I'll make a motion to approve this. I will second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, resolution number 106-2122, 12621, a resolution establishing polling locations for the city of Sheboygan beginning in 2022. Meredith, take it away. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to pass out a couple of maps. Leslie, there is the map is online already on the city's website. Um, 
the locations are on the resolution. This just kind of gives everybody a visual of what I like the paper. it looks like. I know. Everybody else wants to see one. Um, so these we were kind of revisiting because we talked about this as part of the redistricting resolution that went through a few months ago. And I apologize, it's so small, it's kind of hard to see. Um, so the new locations that we would have for the city that haven't been used before are the Humane Society, the Fountain Park Methodist Church, and Christ Lutheran Church. So those are three brand new locations. We've already been out there with the DPW staff doing the ADA assessment and fixing any little things that we've had to fix, and they are good to go for 2022. Um, the rest of our locations are ones that we have used before in the past. Um, and I think I asked you this last time we talked about it, but um, you've confirmed that there is transportation yes. to, you know, say the Christ Lutheran Church for wards 19 and 20. Correct. And it's actually been a little bit better when we had the senior center, mm -hmm. they would have to switch bus routes and this has actually improved that. Great. So that, that's a, a good thing for us too. Great. Yeah. Yes. The, the, you said there's three new? Three. In addition to what was already there. So we have three more polling places? We had eight. Um, we were in the midst with COVID. We've switched so much in the last two years just with like First United, this will be our first time back since um, before 2020, before COVID hit. So um, we have switched that to Kiwanas and like mm -hmm. City Hall has been here. When the Senior Center closed, we had to find a replacement for that. So oh, that's yeah. kind of um, some of the mixing up that we've done, but we have increased from eight to 10, yeah. which yeah. I think will be helpful for the city and our voters as well. Yes. And just a quick reminder, yes. it's the Humane Society, Christ Lutheran Church, and? And um, the Fountain Park Methodist Church. So that's right up here by the, it's very close yep. to the library, but it's very populated area here as well. Um, so we're only putting one ward at that church which it's about 2,500 people, so. And you will be sending out notices to people about if their polling places changed or where they need to go? Because of the redistricting as well, we are going from 26 to 20 wards, which will, everybody will have another ward. So yes, this is, it's gonna be a very big education tool. Um, we already sent, uh, the county is helping us print postcards. We're gonna send out to everybody that's registered Currently, to make sure that they check to make sure um, of what ward they voted and what polling location. Um, so we're having I think it's like fifteen thousand addresses of getting a poll uh, postcard as well. Um, and then I know the Sun was just in my office, so they're going to run an article which will be helpful. I said it helps with the education tool um, and that as well. And we always send out our notices before, but okay. Do you have an advertising budget? I mean, so that you can you know like work with maybe radio to, you know, that they talk about it, the local stations that they say, you know, that polling places may have changed. And, and part of that changed. might just be when they talk about elections coming up. Yeah. Um, we don't want to really send, we've been talking about this, but it's going to be really important to do it closer to an election as well. We have the postcards printed, but we don't want to send them. Mm -hmm. February election is always hit or miss if we have a primary. Mm -hmm. So we might not have a, an election until April. And so we're waiting on those just to get a little closer. But yes. Hurry up and wait. Right. <laughs> hey, questions? Okay. Any more questions? Uh, I will make a motion to Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, motion carried. All right, next meeting date. Chuck, you need the last RO. What was that, Chuck? You need the last RO. Oh, I, I missed one? Yep. Wow. The very last one. Sorry, I, I want to get out of here, I guess. <laughs> RO number 108-2122-12621. The city clerk submitting various license applications, of course. We're recommending granting all the applications. Just a note that there is one new Class B liquor license to transfer 
to the place that used to be Pinky's Bar and Grill. There are a couple of premise description issues that need to be cleared up, but that shouldn't prevent you from granting. They'll just work with them before they issue it. So approval is recommended. I have a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. All right, now next meeting date. January 12th, uh, if there is a need for a meeting between them, which we are working very hard to prevent, <laughs> we'll try to schedule something that works for everybody. But the 29th would be have been the normal date and that's just not okay. ideal. So. We appreciate that you're working yes. not having on the 29th. Thank yeah. you. Uh, motion to adjourn. So make a Second. Got it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year. Thanks.